iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Oh, is that a word? Okay, no. <laughs> it feels fantastic. It's just, um, I mean, it's something that has been near and dear to all of us for two years, and to be able to to finally share this with the world is, um, it's, it's, it's as much of a gift to me as it is to hopefully all the audience members that come through. It's fantastic. It feels so great. I mean, it's been a long time coming, and the fact that everybody came back and the whole creative team is the same, and we're all the same, and uh, yeah, it just feels fantastic. Very excited. Well, the excitement level is huge because, well, one of the reasons is because it's an awesome play, and we've been working really in a way kind of over two years to do this play, and now it's finally happened. We're finally opened. That's a huge part of the excitement. Also, we have five members of the company that um, haven't done Broadway before. They're making their Broadway debut, and that's another part that's really, really exceptionally wonderful. But I think the fact that two years ago plus, we started working, we were shut down, we all stayed in touch two years, and then here we are, and we finally make this thing come true, and it's, it's amazing. I saw, this, I saw the original three times, and Dennis O'Hare, who originated this role, is so deeply ingrained in my memory, and um, I'm just so honored and touched and humbled that I've been trusted with this part to sort of pick up the baton. And uh, I'm just, I'm having a great time with it. It's a great, great part. I, I am proud of us. I'm proud of our work. We put a lot of work into it. I'm, I'm proud of the audiences that we've been getting. It's so incredible here. I mean, they're listening, they're attentive, they're responsive. Um, um, I'm really proud of Richard Greenberg. What a writer, what a human being. And Scott Ellis, our director, and our cast, you know, and our entire production crew, everybody, the dressers, everybody that makes this thing happen. It's such a collective um, uh, animal. So I I'm just really humbled. Well, in the words of Richard Greenberg, it's kind of tough to eloquate. Actually, in the words of Richard Greenberg, said by Jesse Tyler Ferguson, performing the character of Mason Mars at quoting David Cohn, it's kind of tough to eloquate, and it really is. Um, look, you know, it's been a rough two years for everybody, and to be able to be working is a, is a blessing and a gift. To be able to be on Broadway is, is, you know, is one of the great privileges in our profession, and furthermore, to be doing a Richard Greenberg play, in my opinion, is, it really doesn't get much better than that. There are not a lot of words that I can come up with right now to express these emotions. I've learned a lot of new words through Richard Greenberg and his incredible play that we get to perform, and still, I don't know, a lot of positive ones. It's really well said. Um, yeah, it feels amazing. It just feels like a celebration. It's been a long time coming, and for guys like us who are making their Broadway debuts, it's just, it's really special, you know, and it feels like a lot of love came through the, from the audience and from all the people here tonight, so it feels great. It feels good. I'm looking forward to the run. I'm glad that we have all the nerves out, we've gotten some performances under our belt, and we just want to give everybody the best show we can each night. You know, I think I came into this whole process with very little expectation, so it's been everything, and it's been perfect just the way it is. It's been challenging, it's been uh, joyful, it's been electric, it's been really difficult. It's, I mean, it's been all of it, and I've loved every second of it. I mean, aside from the two plus years we've waited, you know, coming out of the pandemic, all that stuff. For me, personally, I got to play a Japanese role on Broadway, and I got to speak Japanese, and that meant a lot to me because I could represent my people, my, con my country. So it's like, it's very, very special for me. It's a play that I saw when it first opened, I guess almost 20 years ago. Um, I liked the play very much then. Of course, it was directed by Joe Mantello, who was in the process of directing Wicked at the time. Uh, but I really, I liked the play. And um, I like Scott Ellis very much as a director. I, you know, I've admired a lot of his productions of and revivals of plays, so I'm expecting he's done a terrific job, and I don't remember the play that well, so I'm interested to see it again. Uh, you know, I saw Take Me Out when I was 17 years old, the original production when I was in high school, and Dennis O'Hare's performance and the play by Richard Greenberg um, changed my life, kind of. Um, I was very closeted, and <laughs> it was a sort of altering show for me. 
Um, saw it a couple times actually in, in a week and uh, I just had to race here as soon as I knew there was a revival. And I love Second Stage and this revival cast. There is absolutely a sense of intimidation. Dennis won a Tony Award for this part. So it's like there are expectations and you don't want to let anyone down. But at the same time, you have to give it your own stamp and you have to move away from what was already done before. And I had to do it authentically as me. There are laughs that I remember Dennis O'Hare getting that I'm still chasing after, but I'm proud to say there are things that I put into it that I know he didn't do. Um, and I, I don't know if he'll ever see this production, but I hope he's proud of me. <laughs> I contacted him after I um, got the role, and he was very generous and very sweet and very, uh, he was filled with a lot of joy. I, I know him a little bit, so I, I, I was able to contact him and I got his blessing, so. It really has, developed into an incredible team of compassionate, kind, relaxed, calm individuals. You know, a lot of us are fathers and, and friends and, 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 and uh, a lot of really generous actors who've done this many, many times. There's a new guy who's never done a play in his life. Um, the wisdom that has been imparted to me that is available to me from like Brandon Dearden and Ken and Scott and Jesse Tyler Ferguson, like these what a privilege, what a privilege. I'm, I'm a humble student. When we first started rehearsing, we had to like work hard to become a team. And over the two years, since we did stay in touch, we were able to kind of just get to know each other a little bit more, a little bit deeper, time passes, and time takes care of a lot of that. And so suddenly, we see each other in the rehearsal room for the first time after two years, and we're like, my friend, my brother. We're back, and now we can go, which is like leaps above. So it, it means a lot. It's something really special. I mean, it's my Broadway debut. I'm new to all of this, and um, Scott Ellis really um, did keep in touch with all of us. So um, we would get an email from Scott every couple of days, couple of weeks, and that really, I, I've never had somebody do that for me, and. It felt very special, so um, yeah, we are a team, and I think uh, we care deeply about each other. We want everybody to succeed, and we want everybody to have a good time. You know, it's a rare opportunity. It really is. I mean, you know, you know theater is full of some really fantastic people and big heart. I mean, they, actors are just some of the most generous, smart, kind, funny people that I know. But to be, but usually it's like a three-month jaunt, and it's over. But we all have like a text chain where we, I mean, we've seen the birth of people's kids in these last two years. I mean, the, the inside meme jokes are, I mean, they will rival, <laughs> you know, rival any uh, social media, you know, um, uh, viral things that you got going on now. But it's, uh, it's really special that, that we were able to stick together and grow together. And it's, uh, it's one that I'm not going to soon forget. It's the best company I've ever been a part of, you know, I mean, we really root for each other. We, we genuinely like each other. It feels like a real team, you know. Everybody has different strengths. Strengths. Um, I think everybody shines in this play, which I think is important. Um, there's a lot of varying degrees, um, levels of, of where people are in their career. There were some Broadway debuts. Uh, we have some international understudies. Um, it's a really, uh, it's a really special group of guys. Um, and as time goes on, we get more and more opportunities to get to know each other one-on-one. -on -one. And yeah, and I, I enjoy that. I enjoy that very, very much, getting to know these guys. There's something, you know, the pandemic was hard, but one thing it did was just, like, create families in places where they didn't exist before. And, you know, we had this really magical couple of weeks together before the world ended and shut down. And uh, we stayed in touch and we kept the dream alive that this might happen. Uh, at times that felt maybe unrealistic, but I think because so much time elapsed and we stayed in contact with one another, when we came back into the process, it was like we had survived something. Even though we'd done it all separately, there's lots of things we didn't know about each other's lives and experiences. We were like, it was, it felt like a band of brothers. It felt like soldiers. It felt like, wow, we'd all been through it and now we can come together and like do this thing for real. Um, and it just deepened the relationship in a way that I think really comes across on stage, I hope. This group of guys is beyond. They're, they're so wonderful. The fact that they stayed with it just shows their dedication and commitment to this play. Um, they're so talented. Uh, there's five of them making their Broadway debuts. Uh, they're, they're, they have huge careers ahead of them. 
Um, and they're just a generous, lovely group of actors. I, it, you know, it's to have a cast this big and to like every single person that you're working with, the understudies too, um, it's just very rare. And I'm so happy that I get to experience this play with them. I'm, I'm very excited for Carl Lundstedt's Broadway <laughs> debut. He's my college roommate, and it's yeah. just like, it's wild yes. to be here and to see it happening. I'm very close to Richard Greenberg and to Scott Ellis, and I love them both so much. I just want them to be extraordinary, and I know they will. Um, I, I love this play and to see it again, and I know it's gonna be glorious, I just know it, so. Um, and a lot of um, unclothed, beautiful men. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing Jesse Tyler Ferguson. Um, we both played Chip in respective revivals of On the Town, and he was so nice to me when he came to see our production. So um, I'm just, uh, he's kind of an icon and, and a role model for me, so I'm excited to see Jesse do his work. Jesse Tyler Ferguson, he's my best friend. I think a lot of people know that, and just, you know, I'm so excited for him. And I'm really happy that I'm on Broadway the same time, right across the street. Well, the, all the Broadway debuts and all the uh, performances in this play is so beautifully written, and it's just, um, Seeing these actors take on this material is really thrilling. I just love being back in a theater. I'm like so enthusiastically going. I'm like, I want to be everywhere, seeing every show. I'm going to go see Phantom again. I'm seeing everything. I'm so excited. Being back in a theater with people, what feels like stepping into kind of a new phase in, in, in the world where we are right now and just celebrating that. I mean, I'm so excited. I Second stage obviously means a lot to myself as a performer and kind of where I, where I really got my start. And so just to be back in a theater and, and get to see friends on stage thrive, I'm just, I'm so excited about it. <laughs> um, I've been looking forward to seeing this show for so long. I'm a huge fan of, uh, of so many members of the cast and yeah, I played baseball growing up, so I feel like I've been drawn to the show for a long time, and I'm just super excited. It really means everything. It's one of the most incredible experiences that, certainly the most incredible experience of my professional life. Yeah. Um, yeah. The camaraderie amongst everybody, the cast, the, the directorial team, the production yeah. backstage, it, it feels incredible. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's like the crew of people that are working on this are just really... Uh, tight there's just really good chemistry and I think that we had that two years ago when we started working together yeah. but then the time of kind of knowing each other for the two years and then getting back together that also played a huge part of it That's too what made it so special because we were yeah. already developing a bond two years ago and then day one come back yeah just great. it really was I adore Scott Ellis as a director I think one of what he does better than almost any other director I've worked with is he gives us so much room to find it. He's not interested in having a finished product on day one. And he'll just make offerings. He'll just drop little offerings. And, he'll, and there'll be offerings and say, hey, maybe you want to look over there. Or maybe you want to look over that way. And we'll look and he says, oh, I found something. Or look and say, nah, that's not. He goes, OK, well, look over here. And it's just a beautiful collaboration. He just respects everyone he invites into the room. Uh, and it's, it's a profound experience. Scott Ellis and I have been friends for a very long time, but this is the first time I got to do something with him on stage. He actually directed a few episodes of Modern Family, uh, but I'm just a big fan of his and of his work, and he's just a good friend. So it's, it's always nice to do things like this with people that you trust and love. He's phenomenal. He's uh, just got a, a wealth of knowledge and uh, tools, but he's also just so fun. He keeps the room uh, so exciting. It was fun to come to rehearsals. We, I think to a certain extent, we're kind of sad that, you know, he's not with us every day um, because he just brings such a levity and such a, such an excitement to the room. There's been a lot of readings of this over the years, even before before the pandemic. And so we, um, we've kind of been loosely connected to this for, I don't know, but I do remember this, you know, when I went to the Tonys back in 2015, with hands of God, I remember we were in the lobby and I was walking and I saw Scott and I said to myself, I said, oh, that's Scott Ellis. I want to work with him one day. And as he was walking, he said, we're going to work together. And I'll never forget that. And, um, and I don't know what the timeline was, but the next time I heard from him, it was to do a reading of this. And that's kind of when the journey began. Um, and um, I had never worked with him. He has a, a wonderful reputation. I think he's a great director and I think he directed this play, amazing. He's so funny. 
He's like, he's just, he, he never gets like really angry, but like when he does kind of get angry, it's just so, so he, he's just so funny. Uh, he's a br obviously a brilliant director, um, but he's just so like easy to be around. Um, I, I don't get nervous, you know, around him like I like I do with some other directors. So I, so I feel like I can share whatever's going on in my head and be like, I want to try this, and then you know, like, yeah, go ahead and try it, you know. So it, it felt like he was part of the team, really. Uh, it, it, and it really did. I'm not just saying this. He's, he has that, he has that thing. Maybe it's because he's been nominated for a Tony nine times. Maybe it has something to do with that experience. I don't know, but no, he's, he's lovely. It's, it was. I knew it was the perfect opportunity. Everything has fallen into place. It's exactly what I asked the universe for. Um, an opportunity to be challenged, terrified emotional, intelligent, provocative, uh, with people in a safe space, with people who are, um, you know, gonna, gonna make me really, it's gonna make me uncomfortable, and in, in the best way, and that's what I was looking for. And I'm used to doing theater in Los Angeles, uh, and I love Los Angeles, and, I've, and I'm so grateful for the opportunities I've had there, but I have never experienced audiences like the ones in New York, right from minute one, our first preview, you know, they came in with such kind, loving, supportive energy, and it carried us through that first preview, and it's carried us through this entire preview process. They, they're, they're smart, they're listening, they want to like it, they want to follow it. They, there's a lot of little twists and turns in this play. There's a lot of like little pivots that I think some audiences could miss, check out. No, not a single one of our preview audiences has missed it. They've carried us all the way to the end. So it's been, uh, that's been a phenomenal thing. You know, the, the reaction from the audiences have been so generous and, and surprising and shocking. And I think part of it is, is a credit to Richard Greenberg's, I mean, timeless play. I mean, his play is 20 years old, but the themes in it, because it's so rooted in humanity and how do we keep missing each other's humanity and how are we looking to engage with each other and, and with all of the noise that's around and all of the preconceived notions and old ideas. And so I think the audience is constantly in a state of, of rooting for people to interact with their best selves. And for whatever reason, some of these characters just don't have that capability and the heartbreak and the humor that comes through. It's, uh, it's just an emotional roller coaster for I hope for the audience and for us doing it every night. The audience has been great. It's been, uh, been surprised how, um, how well they've seemed to listen, how they really are with us the entire time. It's not always, um, there's a lot of references there. There's a lot of intelligent wit and humor, and the audiences really seem to be on board for all of it. And so we've been really grateful for that. It's been good. Yeah, really, really positive. positive. Really, really positive. That's, um, we've, we've been lucky to have uh, our friends and family see the show. Yeah, and yeah. A lot of positive feedback. Um, I mean, the, the director, Scott, is a, he's a beast. Yeah, yeah. He's a beast. Working with Scott was amazing, really amazing. Um, yeah, but the audiences have just really, you can feel them paying attention to every moment of the show, which is great. They laugh, they gasp, they kind of get it at every little turn, and so that's, that's all you can hope for. Oh yeah, I mean, I just hope they remember it, because it's, it's something that I look back on, and it's so fast and furious and crazy. I hope they can take the time and just embrace every single moment. Yeah, and be proud that they're one of the shows like welcoming everybody back to Broadway. That's just such a gift, and we feel gifted to be here. Second Stage is amazing. It will always hold a very special place in my heart. I love supporting them um, and everything they do. They're an amazing company to work for. I did Dogfight for them. That was my second show in the city about almost 10 years ago, which is crazy to think that way. But um, they taught me so much about how to be a professional actor in New York City, and I will forever be very grateful to Second Stage and always a huge supporter. Um, I've loved Second Stage my whole career. I've been clamoring to get in there and do a production with them, so I just feel I'm really lucky to be a part of that family now and to be making my Second Stage debut um, right now, so it feels good. It's a lot. This play is huge. And I guess I want them to know, I guess I'll say just be prepared. You think it might be one thing, but it's not going to be that thing. Just be open to it and, and listen because there's a lot of great words. It does feel 
sad. It feels like there's a lot of work to do. But um, it's kind of cool that we get to do it and people see it and people see that it's still relevant. Maybe that sparks something in them to kind of motivate change. There's so many traumatic events that happen through the, through the span of the play that it affects people in different ways based on their own experiences too. That's true. There's, there's a lot of texture within, within the script. I'm just so excited that gay representation is happening on Broadway. I think it's way overdue in terms of time, so I'm excited to see that play out tonight. Yeah, I think uh, it's time for people to be reminded that like bravery has happened, will continue to happen, and we should continue putting up stories that let the next generation of people in sports, in movies, and like whatever industry you are, to see yourself in these characters and be brave about who you are, in safety, of course. Just stick with us. I think, you know, the show has some heavy moments. It has some... Uh, uh, some really interesting thoughts and things to wrestle with, but uh, when you when you keep listening, when you stick with it, there's so much uh, rewarding payoff. Seeing how the characters change, how they evolve, how their true natures come out, that um, that a little bit of patience goes a long way with the play. iHeartRadio Broadway, driven by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing.